Hey everyone, in this video we're going to be going into the electrical setup of Amelia, our 4x4 Sunraider. Now, when rebuilding Amelia, this was my main task because Mac was basically better at everything else. So you won't be getting to see that beautiful freckled face in this one, you're stuck with me. Alright, let's do this. Before I ever hooked up the batteries, I spent many hours running wires in Amelia. Since we put the walls in Amelia before the bench seats, which was the home of the batteries, we needed to have most of the wire already run. We made little wire highways so that everything stayed together and organized. I left plenty of extra wire so I had the flexibility when the time came to hook everything up. A little bit of planning goes a long way. The heart of our electrical system are our batteries. We're using two 125 amp hour lithium batteries from Stark Power. The important thing to note here is that they're lithium batteries, not AGM, not lead acid. So why is this important? Well, lithium batteries are far more efficient than their lead acid and AGM counterparts. They charge faster, they have a longer lifespan, they're half the weight, and you can deplete them more without damaging them. With AGM and lead acid batteries, depleting them more than 50% is bad for the health of the battery, and you can do some long-term damage. Lithium batteries can safely be depleted to 20%. So in our case, 250 amp hours of lithium is effectively 200 amp hours before we might start damaging our batteries. If this was AGM or lead acid, we'd only be getting 125 amp hours before we might start damaging our batteries. That's a big difference. One thing to note is that charging lithium batteries in below freezing temperatures can cause damage. Many lithium batteries now have built-in cutoffs into their internal BMS systems, but unfortunately ours don't. From the time of us building Amelia to making this video, it seems like Stark Power is no longer around. So if you are looking for some lithium batteries, check out Battleborn. They make great lithium batteries and they have the built-in temperature cutoffs. To keep our batteries healthy, we need to make sure that they get charged. And in our setup, we can do that two different ways. The first is solar. We have a 24 volt, 280 watt panel from Renogy. They now sell a 300 watt instead. This thing is a behemoth of a panel. I chose it for a lot of reasons, but one of the biggest was because it was just about the perfect size for the roof of Amelia over the bed area. Also, 280 watts. I wanted to get a rigid panel for the sake of longevity. When we were in our van again, we had three of the flexible panels and they all failed. It's a monocrystalline panel, which is also a plus because monocrystalline panels have cells that peak at 22% efficiency, while polycrystalline peaks at 18%. So nerdy. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I love you. I was also looking for a panel that was more than 12 volts. The higher the voltage, the smaller the wire gauge can be. In our case, a 280 watt panel at 24 volts and a wire length of 20 feet needed 10 gauge wire. The same setup in 12 volt would need four gauge wire. That's a much bigger wire to deal with, especially over 20 feet. Our charge controller is the Victron Smart Solar MPPT100-20. It has built-in Bluetooth so we can monitor how much power we're bringing in. It also keeps a history of what it pulls in per day. It's super handy and fascinating to see in action. It's important that it's an MPPT charge controller rather than a PWM because MPPT charge controllers are 30% more efficient than PWM. That's a huge amount of power to just throw away using a PWM charge controller. The second way we can charge our batteries is from our starter battery. This is achieved with an isolator combiner from Victron. The one we're using is the Cyrix LICT. This one's designed specifically for combining lead acid and lithium batteries. With fancy math and magic, this little wonder automatically opens up a connection between the batteries when it sees a charging voltage. This way, when the alternator kicks in and starts charging the starter battery, the Cyrix opens the connection and allows both batteries to charge. Another neat feature of the Cyrix is that it's bi-directional. So not only can the starter battery charge the house batteries, but the house batteries can also charge the starter battery. So when we're sitting around at camp for a couple days or even a couple of weeks, our starter battery will still get some love. We opted not to run any wiring for shore power. Over two years of living on the road, we plugged in maybe two times and neither time was it a necessity. So we've covered the batteries and the things that charge them. Now it's time to talk about what's drawing power from the batteries. 
Everything we chose to put in Amelia needs to be super efficient. We don't want anything sucking up power that doesn't absolutely need it, so our list of items drawing power from the batteries is relatively short and almost everything is 12 volt. On just about everything, there's an on-off switch to avoid any parasitic draws. We've got the Dometic fridge, max air vent fans, water pump, tank monitor, LED lights, USB ports, and an inverter. If you'd like any specific product details, I have a more in-depth write-up up on our website and I'll link it in the description below. All right, let's look at an ugly diagram. So, the solar panel runs to a charge controller. The charge controller then runs to a fuse panel, which then runs to a circuit breaker, and then finally to the batteries. The Cirrix LICT bridges the gap between the starter battery and the house batteries. There are circuit breakers on either side of the Cirrix to prevent shorts that may cause a fire. All the items that draw from the batteries are connected through a fuse panel, the same fuse panel that the charge controller goes to. That fuse panel is then connected to a circuit breaker and then to the batteries. For the ground connections, I set up a negative bus bar that is connected to the chassis. With things connected this way, I don't have to put a ton of wires on the battery terminals. It not only looks good, but it also helps keep things more organized. With Victron's smartphone app, I'm able to keep tabs on everything. As mentioned before, the charge controller has built-in Bluetooth so I can monitor how it's doing in real time and look at historical data. It's really interesting to see how clouds passing by can affect its output. We also have the Victron BMV712 smart battery monitor. This thing is super fancy. It also has Bluetooth so I can view it with Victron's app. It spits out the battery status in a percentage, which is amazing. It also displays current, time to empty, historical data, and much more. You can even set alarms for low charge level. The 712 is connected to the batteries with something called a shunt. This device sits between the battery negative and the common ground. If you start working on your own system, I urge you to test things as you go, even if it just means putting some wires down to battery terminals. I did this with everything that was gonna go behind the walls of Amelia. How horrible would it have been to get the walls in Amelia and then realize something wasn't working? It would have been terrible to have to take those walls back out to rewire. So please take time for some testing. This system was amazing. We would spend full days working, which meant charging with our laptops through the inverter and doing everything else in the day that we used power for. And by the end of the day, we'd still be at 92%. Then we'd go to bed and in the mornings when we woke up, the panel would have pulled in enough power already to have our batteries back up at 100%. That thing was an absolute beast at pulling in power and it was perfect for our needs. I wanted to give a quick thank you to our friend Cameron of OTG Camper. He was a tremendous amount of help in helping me plan this whole system out and I would have been lost without him. If this task feels super daunting for your own setup, I would highly recommend using Cameron. And thank you Owen for not making me do this video. I would be talking and the words that were coming out of my mouth would make no sense to me. So if I was doing this alone, I would hire Cameron because I don't know what the hell is going on with any of this stuff. Again, if you'd like a more detailed explanation on any of this stuff, check out the write-up I did on our website. It also includes a part list if you need help finding any of this stuff. I hope you guys found this all helpful and we'll see you next time.